Have you always thought that the history you learn in school is full and complete? Well, we have a surprise for you. In this film, we unveil the mysterious veil of times and places that, for various reasons, were omitted in official lessons. Unit 731, this was a secret research program of the Imperial Japanese Army during World War II, conducted in Manchuria, specializing in biological and chemical warfare. This program is known for conducting a series of cruel, unethical human experiments, which often led to the death of the participants. Established by Lieutenant General Shiro Ishii in 1936, Unit 731 carried out experiments on tens of thousands of war prisoners and civilians, often referred to as logs or marudas, to conceal the true nature of these activities. The research included infecting people with various pathogens such as plague, tetanus, cholera, and other diseases to understand their effects and develop effective methods of warfare against them. Many of these experiments were conducted without anesthesia, and many people died as a result of these tortures. Unit 731 is also responsible for numerous biological attacks during the war, including dropping plague-infected fleas over China. It is estimated that these actions may have caused the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. Despite the vast scale of war crimes attributed to Unit 731, most members of the unit were never held accountable. In fact, after the end of World War II, much information about the unit's activities was concealed by the American occupying forces in exchange for access to the research data. This grant of immunity to many members of Unit 731 is the subject of ongoing controversy and criticism. Dancing Plague This phenomenon occurred in various historical periods, but is most famous from the Middle Ages, especially in the 14th and 15th centuries in Europe. These events were characterized by the uncontrollable dancing of a large number of people, sometimes hundreds or even thousands, who started dancing without any apparent reason and continued to dance for days, weeks, or even months. One of the most famous cases of the dancing plague is the dance epidemic that took place in 1518 in Strasbourg, now in the Alsace region of France. In July of that year, a woman named Frau Trofea began to dance on one of the city's streets for no visible reason. Within a week, 34 people had joined her, and after a month, more than 400 people were dancing. Many of these people danced until they literally collapsed from exhaustion, dying from causes such as heat stroke, heart attack, or exhaustion. The causes of this phenomenon are unclear, but there are many theories. One suggests that the dancing plague may have been the result of consuming bread contaminated with ergot, a fungus that infects rye. Ergot produces toxins that can cause severe hallucinations and neurological problems. Another theory points to the possibility of psychological stress due to social, economic, and religious crises. In this case, the dancing play could be a form of collective hysteria, an escape from the realities of everyday life, or even an act of rebellion against church authority, which was the dominant force at that time. In some cases, events of this type were also suspected of being related to religious cults or a form of ritual dance. The phenomenon of the dancing plague attracts the attention of historians, psychologists, anthropologists, and neurologists as an interesting example of collective human behavior and response to stress. Although such events do not occur in the modern world, they can help us understand how people cope with extreme stress and the forms collective reactions to it can take. Willowbrook School this was a state-run school for intellectually disabled individuals located in Staten Island, New York. It operated from 1947 to 1987. By the late 1960s, Willowbrook began to attract attention due to the scandalous conditions that prevailed there. The school was overcrowded. It was designed for 4,000 people, but in 1965 there were over 6,000 residents. Sanitary conditions were inadequate, and both health care and education were insufficient. Patients were often neglected, and cases of violence were common. 
The practices at Willowbrook caught the attention of journalist Geraldo Rivera, who in 1972 produced a documentary titled Willowbrook, The Last Great Disgrace, exposing the horrific conditions at the school. After the broadcast of this film, the public was outraged and initiated a process of reforming institutions for the care of the disabled in the United States. Medical experiments were also conducted on patients at Willowbrook, the most famous being the Willowbrook experiments, conducted by Dr. Saul Krugman, which aimed to understand the development and immunization against viral hepatitis. In 1975, following a series of lawsuits, an agreement was reached to improve conditions at Willowbrook. The school was finally closed in 1987, and its former patients moved to community care or small group homes. Although Willowbrook State School no longer exists, its legacy lives on as an important lesson about the rights of disabled people and the need for a humanitarian approach to health care and education. The Great Smog of London this was a persistent smog that affected London from December 5th to 9th, 1952, formed due to weather conditions and the emission of gases, mainly from household and factory chimneys and vehicle exhausts. It all started with a strong temperature inversion, where cooler air near the Earth's surface was trapped by warmer air above, creating a lid that held in the smog generated from industrial and domestic emissions. At that time, many homes in London were heated with coal, which was particularly polluted. Additionally, the industry significantly contributed to air pollution. When atmospheric conditions brought a lack of wind, the smog began to accumulate over the city. The smog was so dense that visibility was greatly reduced, and even during the day, sunlight was unable to penetrate through the polluted air. This hindered transportation and city operations. Airports were shut down, bus services were suspended, and hospitals were overwhelmed with patients suffering from breathing problems. It is maintained that about 4,000 people died directly due to the air pollution during the Great Smog, and a total of around 12,000 people died due to long-term health effects. Many people suffered from respiratory problems, such as asthma and bronchitis, with children, the elderly, and those with pre-existing health issues being the most vulnerable. As a result of this disaster, the Clean Air Act was introduced in 1956, aimed at reducing pollutant emissions. This act led to significant changes in the way homes were heated and industries operated, greatly improving the air quality in London and other British cities. The Cadaver Synod This is one of the most controversial events in the history of the Catholic Church. It was convened in January 897 by Pope Stephen VI, who was politically allied with Lambert II, then a claimant to the imperial throne. The main purpose of the Synod was the posthumous trial of Pope Formosus, who died in 896 and had crowned Emperor Arnulf, the rival of Lambert II. The Synod aimed to annul all of Formosus' decisions, including Arnulf's coronation. Formosus' body was exhumed, dressed in papal vestments, and placed on a throne. During the macabre trial, Formosus answered questions through a young deacon who stood behind him and pretended to be his voice. Formosus was accused of perjury, simony, selling church offices, and also for transferring himself from one episcopal see, Ancona, to Rome against the rules. After the trial, Formosus' body was stripped of its papal vestments. Three fingers of his right hand, which he used for blessings, were cut off. And then the body was thrown into the Tiber River. The decisions of the Cadaver Synod were later annulled by Pope Theodore II at the Roman Synod in 897, and Formosus' body was recovered from the Tiber and reburied with full honors. Over the next few years, the history of the church experienced many twists and turns, leading to continuous changes in the stance on the legitimacy of the events and decisions of the Cadaver Synod. <laughs>